All right, we finally did it, guys. So adding our own idle and run animations in game animation sample is super easy. As you can see here, when we have our sword, we're going to do this run animation. When we don't have our sword, we're going to do this default run animation. And we also have this idle pose as well for our sword. And the same thing for when we're not holding the weapon. So this also works for crouching. So when we're crouching and we stop crouching, he's going to go into this. And the same thing if we like unholster the weapon, he's going to be doing this default run. So I just wanted to give a huge shout out to Zero Two Game Dev who made this 30 minute video just breaking it all down. Highly recommend watching this if you want to understand the madness. And also want to give a shout out to Wendy who I think got the whole train started with this whole thing. So definitely go give a like to these guys videos and subscribe to their channel. And one last thing that I wanted to mention was this video by Pitchfork Academy where you can download 1,800 Unreal assets that you can probably use for this video here too. There's some Lyra assets here. So yeah, definitely give this a watch and probably download this stuff. This is really cool. All right, so I will be using Combat Fury 5.5 for this, but you don't have to if you don't have Combat Fury. You can just use Game Animation Sample 5.5. You can use 5.42 if you want, but you're going to be missing out on features like crouching and sprinting that come in 5.5. All right, so I have a fresh project here of Combat Fury, and all I have in here is Insane Air Combos, which you can also find in the marketplace. I'll leave this in the description if you guys are interested in these animations. The only thing that I'm in here that I'm interested in is this run animation here that we're going to be using and this idle animation right here. So to get started, let's just right click on one of these and retarget the animations. We're going to be using UEFN Mannequin and let me search for idle and this is the animation. I'm going to export this. I'll make a new folder in here for UEFN and I'll make another one for idle and export. If we open this up real quick, we're going to want Lupin to be set to true or just turn it on, tick it. And we also want to enable root motion and force root lock. And we can save. And now we also want that run animation too. So I'm going to retarget these animations again. We'll search for run. Sorry, I'm going to search for UEFN. And hit run, export this. Now, I am only using two animations to keep things simple. Uh, just make sure that you have looping set on and root and force root and everything like that. So once you have your animations and you have them retargeted, what we're going to do is we're going to search for in the content browser, search for E underscore stance and open this up. And in here, you're just going to see stand and crouch. We're going to add one more in here for sword. And this is where you're going to add all of your other uh, stances. So if you have a pistol, rifle, anything like that, you're going to add it in here. And we're going to save this. And then we're going to go find our character, our sandbox character, and open him up. And in here, we're going to need to make a variable called stance. This is going to be the E stance. So just change that to E stance and compile save. And we're going to leave this open. We'll come back to it. And then we're going to open up the AVP sandbox character and go to the event graph, go to update logic and update states. Over here in the bottom, what we're going to do is grab this, copy it, and then we're going to remove the binding. And then we're going to go to our sandbox character and then search for stance and then grab the stance in here and pull out of here. And we're going to promote this to a variable. And I'm going to name this E stance. And the reason why I'm naming this E stance because we already have a variable in here called stance. And I don't want to confuse myself because we're going to be searching this in the poll search database. Anyway, now we're just going to connect this up like this and then connect this into there and compile save. And now let's go back into the content browser and we're going to go to characters, UEFM mannequin, animations, motion matching and open up the pulse search database dense and then in here you can see uh, here's where our stance is for our crouching so crouching should still work for you by the way so if you quickly just check that out but in our pulse search database if we go to idle click on edit and then in here we can add a new column we're going to add this uh, enumeration or and then the binding is going to be our e stance not this stance in the here 
for the East dance, the one that we created. And then we're going to just duplicate this idol. And we're going to browse to it. And we're going to duplicate this post search database. And we're going to rename this one sword at the end. So stand, uh, stand idol sword. Open this up. We're going to delete this idle loop. Go to the content browser. Go to your animations. I'm going to grab my idle in here. And now we're going to open up the idle real quick. And in the notifies, right click. Go to add notify state. And search for override. And we're going to click on this override base cost bias. And just put that in there. If we don't do this, by the way, it just won't work. So if I just show you real quick um, without it. So before we do anything, let's just change this to our idle sword. So we have our idols and we have our idle sword in here. For the idols, we're going to change this to stand, the enumeration, and the sword is going to be sword. Okay. And last thing that we're going to do is in our sandbox character, let's just grab this R key and disable this because we're not going to be using the cycle weapon. We're just going to be using the weapon index. But I'll get into that a little bit later. We don't really need it just yet. But with our R key, I'm going to get a flip flop and then we're going to grab our stance. Get it? and switch put the a in there we're gonna duplicate this put the b in there so for the first one we're gonna grab the stance again and set it and if we are standing if we are standing then the stance is going to be sword then we want to switch to the sword and we can duplicate this and the same thing here if we're in our sword stance then we want to go into our stand stance okay and then we can just print a string real quick and now if we press play and then press R, you can see up there is telling us that we're in our sword or stand stance. But as you can see, nothing's happening. That's because we need to add a notify in here in our idle. So add notify, the override, cost bias, put that in there like that. It doesn't really matter where you put it, in my opinion. And as you can see now, he's going into the sword stance, right? But he's not going back into the idle stance until we move like if i go to stand and then move he does it so we need to do the same thing in here as well in our other idle so if we just copy the override and then if we go into our idols and open up the idle in here let's make a new track and paste and test this out real quick there you go so now when i press sword he goes into the sword stance when i press it again he goes into the idle pose to the default idle poles. Okay, we can save now. Exit out of here, exit out of here. We can leave this open. We don't need this anymore. And for our character real quick, what I'm going to do is instead of this, I'm just going to use the weapon index instead. So we can just connect this into there like this. Paste it. Of course, if you don't have combat fury, you don't need to do this. For our sword, we're going to change the index to one and the stand is going to be left on zero. And I'm going to go to easy combo buffering and I'm going to add a new index in here. But index one is going to be sword, index zero is unarmed. So now to grab our runs as well, just go into our poll search database and then go back, go to stand runs, edit. We're going to add a column in here, the, uh, the enumeration or the binding is going to be east stance. And then we're going to duplicate the loop, we're going to search for it. We're going to duplicate the loop poll search database, name this sword open this up we can delete this loop forward in here and we can grab our run animation put it in here so before i even mention anything else there's one thing i should probably say is depending on your animations you're probably gonna be doing it in different ways like there's probably some tweaking that you need to do on your own end to make things work so not every animation is going to be the exact same not every animation is going to work perfectly or anything like that so you need to probably do some tweaking on your own and that's why i highly suggest going to watch uh zero two game devs video too because he's probably going to be explaining things and that might click with you with whatever that you're trying to do but anyway for this front animation this isn't going to work by default and I'll show you uh, as well. So if we just quickly change this to our run sword loop, our loop sword, and then we have our loops here. The loops is going to be stand. The sword is going to be sword. And this isn't going to work, as I said. Like if I press play, 
and grab our sword as you can see nothing's working like he's he's not he's not doing it he can go into this but he's not he's not doing the run and you might think oh just add the override onto the animation but no that doesn't work either if we add the override onto this animation for example i'll show you add override and press play as you can see the animation is like messed up look at his legs it's all it's broken broken that doesn't work so we need to delete this what we need to do is change this run animation from 0 0.05 to 0 0.5 to 0 0.05 from 0 0.005 to 0 0.05 okay and that's gonna work i think yeah that's gonna work but if we let go of the thing he's gonna still do it so what we need to do now is go into our loops the run loops open this up open up the run forward the loop forward and in here we're going to make a new track and in here this is where we're going to add our override if we add the override in here it's fine and now if we press play he's going to do the t pose this happens quite a lot but don't worry if, uh, with the t pose by the way it doesn't actually happen when you um package the game it only happens in the editor all right cool so now we have this run then we have this run and when we holster the weapon again he goes back into it there we go so we can crouch and he will still do it and everything's working and that's pretty much it so last thing i want to do here is just grab our just grab one of these uh, foily event runs from the loop animations from any one of these animations and we're just going to add it into this run animation over here our run animation so where he's doing the step about there you can add that and add it over here as well and that's the right foot this is the left foot the last thing that i want to do here is just change this idle pose because it looks slightly weird it's not supposed to look like that so if we quickly just open up our abp sandbox character and in here in the animation graph so it's just double click in here you're gonna see this basic pose blend and this is what's causing it basically so what i'm gonna do is just change the blend weight from 0.05 to 0.7 and also if we go to the layered blend per bone and go to layered setup index branch filters index zero you're gonna see the bone name here is spine zero three we can change this to if we just quickly open up our skeleton for the UFN, we can change this to clavicle R underscore R. So we can just copy that name and paste it into there. The blend depth can stay at four, that's fine. Compile save. And yeah, as you can see, like the idle pose just looks a lot better because we're only affecting the right arm and not the whole spine or body, anything like that. But yeah, that's gonna be it for the video. Hopefully you liked it and I'll see you guys in the next one.